Hello everybody and welcome once again to All of Fabric 3. So today we are going to carry on with modern industrialization and there is a few things I'd like to do. I probably haven't got time for everything I'd like to do but first we'll have a look at the chemical reactor and some post-processing of the um, distillation tower. So as you can see I've now got the distillation tower fully built and I've already started to process. I've added a whole load of um, layers so it's now max height which is the 80 so you've got eight levels of uh, chemicals coming out of here so now I can process um, steam crack naphtha which is in this tank here fairly efficiently and it will actually come out in and we'll get one bucket's worth of these chemicals for one bucket's worth of um, steam craft naphtha so that's a good thing we've also got we've actually got multiple things in here I've still got the, the three uh, tanks from the previous time when I was splitting up crude oil and I still can do that in the same machines which is good because it's pretty expensive as we've seen uh, also I set up a little process here this one is to make diesel so the inputs of here are coming from these two tanks so I've got sulfuric heavy fuel and this one's actually sulfuric light fuel you can see in here but it's used it all up um, and that's going to be fed into this chemical reactor so with water, hydrogen and sulfuric heavy fuel or sulfuric light fuel, they will make sulfuric acid. Uh, it'll also produce heavy fuel and light fuel. At the moment you can see that this is something is full, otherwise it would, it would be carrying on processing. I think the heavy fuel is actually full because it produces it in batches. Of, let's have a look at the recipe, probably the easiest way. So we need 1,200, uh, 12 buckets which will give you 12,000 millibuckets of fuel, so there's not enough space for that. So when with these two particular chemicals, we're getting out sulfuric acid, which is great, because we need sulfuric acid. Um, let's put the escape on here and have a look at what goes on to this next. So in here, we've got the light fuel and the heavy fuel into an electric mixer, and that will produce diesel. So the diesel is coming out, and it's getting stored into this tank here. So I've got an industrial tank, uh, which is 400, yeah, 444 buckets of diesel coming out in here. So that's one process, very simple as it happens. And these tanks are in here because they've got extra, um, extra resources I want to process, and I want to process these first. I probably, I probably should join those onto these tank, onto these pipes, so I can specify a priority. And out of here we get sulfuric acid. As you can see, I've got 115 buckets of sulfuric, sulfuric acid, which is great. Because one of the next processes I've set up here, as you can see, I've set up two processes, is this one. And the idea is to make this stuff, sterine butadine rubber. So let's have a look at the recipe of sterry. I've got a bucket's worth in there. I have actually. Let's, let's just get a bucket out of that. Now, cause it's easier to say the uses. So the uses of, of this is basically because we've got two uses. So we can with argon and sterine butadine rubber plus a silicon wafer and antimony dust and an aluminium dust, we will get random access memory. Obviously something for later on. As it happens, this one is if we put it into the vacuum freezer, so one bucket will give us 64 rubber sheets, which is actually great because uh, some of these machines that we've got require 1300 or so rubbish rubber sheets this is a nice way of doing it so let's have a look how we actually do this so the recipe for that so the one i'm being using is chrome tiny dust with sterile sterine butadine will produce this sterine butadine rubber the sterile sterine butadine is basically sterine plus butadine now butadine comes straight from the uh, distillation tower so we have no problems with that one at all. So that comes straight out of here. In fact, I think it comes out in reasonable... Yeah, it's a reasonably... 125 millibuckets is actually quite good. One-eighth of a bucket. Um, and the chemical react. I need to go back one more, don't I? So, and sterine is based on ethyl benzene plus steam. So ethyl benzene and an iron dust it comes again from the um, distillation tower. So there's two of these materials. <coughs> so here's your ethyl benzene. So that's from the distillation tower. So I've set those recipes up, basically, very simple. What we have here 
is we have ethyl benzene and it's an iron dust with some steam. Steam we can get from the boiler, no big deal. We'll produce sterine and hydrogen. That is, uh, those are the two outputs. So let's go and put some ethyl benzene in here. Uh, I've got this is this pipe here, as you can see, and then this will get passed, and the production out of this will be sterine. So sterine will get passed into this chemical reactor. So we're getting sterine coming in. We're also getting in here butadiene, and that will produce sterine butadiene. So we can then feed this sterine back into itself with some chrome dust. We'll produce this sterine butadiene rubber. Which I've already got some in here, so I can just connect that pipe back into this tank here, and then it will start to output some fluid. Let's just do that. Uh, and we can also put this one back in here as well. Ooh, ooh, too late. Should have done that first. In fact, I have got in here my yellow sugar box. I've got a whole load of stuff. So let's just take out some of this. Because we would like to process seven. I've got seven buckets worth. <clears throat> Did I seven buckets? No, I've got eight buckets worth of this. So let's go and take those down to the vacuum freezer and start to make some rubber sheets. So I'll see you in a second. So as you can see, I've got a tank already prepared and that just needs to change the direction of this. So this tank was already being absorbed and put into this steel fluid hatch. So that'll give you three buckets worth. So all I need to do now is come along here and fill this up with some more buckets of this. A steridine butadine rubber and while, while that's happening because it can actually i wonder if there's a faster way of doing this if i used it uh, the ordinary tank i could just simply put those in so i'll tell you what I'll, f I'll fill this up and be back in a second right so i've got seven buckets in it and in here we should now see rubber sheets being produced they should come out into here as you can see we've already got some rubber sheets coming straight out of here and as soon as those get taken out well there'll be plenty so the next recipe is nearly finished so we'll get another 64 coming in here so there you'll see the rubber sheets are coming in really fast so that will give us plenty of rubber sheets for the next uh, machine <laughs> it really is a, a, so we got 384 let's have a look at the recipe of this there is another recipe as well we've been using up to now the synthetic oil recipe with some paper but there is one in the chemical reactor with raw rubber now i don't see a recipe for raw rubber um maybe that's been disabled i'm not sure plus sulfuric acid will give 20 rubber sheets so that would be also nice um, but maybe that's not been implemented and the last one was this with one bucket of styrene butadiene rubber will give 64 rubber sheets as you can see and that number has just gone up to 492 and it will go up on 508 is it's going up 16 at a time because that's the export capacity of that right it's night time i'll be back in a second so that's finished and as you can see we've got 796 rubber sheets now the next thing we're going to set up and make is some polyvinyl chloride <coughs> so this is actually a good one to do very similar to the last recipe but we'll go through it step by step and then you can see what we do so here I've got some tin cables. I need to get some more tin cables out of my backpack. I think I've got them in here. If I haven't, and then I've got them in here. Oh, sorry, Kate. I need my... So I've got 18, oh, 18 of those. That's fine. Let's put those into here. And what I want to do is make sure I've got enough room. So I'm going to take bring one up here for the next machine. And the next machine we're going to do is... Well, let's have a look at polyvinyl chloride to start with. And, and its uses. So, as you can see, we've already got polythene. We've made, we've made and used that, and this polyvinyl chloride, otherwise known as PVC. The recipe for this, oh no, that's not, I messed that, I messed that up, I didn't click. <clears throat> Let's have a look at the uses of that. So the uses of this are basically to make four different, three different things, no, four different things we can make. Uh, polyvinyl chloride sheets, which actually has no uses for us so like, at the moment. But these ones are important, the processing unit board. And that is one of these things that requires platinum plates, annealed copper plates, cadmium batteries, and digital circuit boards. We made digital circuit boards last time. 
cadmium batteries, the recipe for those, obviously it's fairly sim similar to what we've got. We need cadmium dust. The recipe for cadmium dust is in the centrifuge with four mosanine mosanite dust. We've, we did that last time as well. So what we were using uh, necrodam dust and but the cadmium is the other product that comes out that we actually make a use out of here. So that's so that was that one and the uses of this particular machine of this here uh, of this highly advanced machine upgrade. No I don't want the highly advanced machine. Oh yes let's make that one. We can make the highly advanced machine upgrade. So that increases the speed of that machine. We'll look at those later on. But the important one here is the processing unit. Because the uses of the processing unit is then used in these large advanced motors. And they are large advanced pumps. And also it's used in heavy, highly advanced machine casing, which is really the next tier of machines. Uh, if we look at the uses of that, we can then start to go to EV extreme voltage energy hatches output hatches oops let's, i'm going back let's go back one and i think it makes some more machines as well so we've got input and output fluid items and here we've got a large diesel generator that's an important one ev storage to store the, the energy we haven't made much done with that much and the transformer and then the last thing is to make uh, oh another transformer same thing different direction so those are the different recipes that we've got in here i think that's all let's look at the crafting recipes which is because they're all, basically the assembler is does exactly the same as a crafting table but it's automa automation so we have um applied in logistics so we don't need to do that particular one so that's really the next tier of machines um so the large pumps are the ones that we need to do for the diesel engines. So right, okay. Now I don't want to waste too much time. Let's set this up. So polyvinyl. Oh, so I didn't look at the recipe for design. So we'll look at the recipe first. So we need polyvinyl chloride plus chromium dust will produce the poly. The same, almost the same. So the same principle with lead tidiest and we'll get three hundred. Yes, that's right. So we get three, eight. We get seven hundred for the, the, with the chrome. The same, the same as the previous recipes. And vinyl chloride is made out of acetylene and hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is actually quite handy because we've got hydrogen plus chlorine. That chlorine is made with the um, centri electrolyzer, or yeah, we put the electrolyzer, which put salt into the electrolyzer will give us chlorine. So salt we've done dealt with previously, I think. So the electrolyzer is here. And in the electrolyzer, I've been making already some sodium dust. I've got some water, so we produce hydrogen. Yes, water is producing the hydrogen and the salt is producing the, the chlorine. So we can then put those two together. In fact, what I've done is these are going out here so the chlorine is going out here and it's coming along underneath here so we need to mix those two together first of all with the uh, chemical reactor so I need to bring these two up so I need copper and I need bronze fluid pipes let's get those out of the bag up and they're actually in here aren't they the backpack copper fluid pipe and bronze fluid pipe don't need too many of these but we'll, this will do to start with have a very clean inventory at the moment have you noticed so let's get on with this copper fluid pipe i want to click this on the end of it like this and do it twice and it pushes it up uh, and i need to be able to click the end of the <laughs> click the end of it to be able to connect the two together and it's a bit harder than i'd like it to be because it's we'll just go down here and do it that way should be able to reach it here yes i can just take the wrench no, it didn't work. Anyway, well, let's just remove the tin cable for the time being because it's a lot easier without the tin cable being in the way. So that connects up nicely. We'll also do the same with the, the hydrogen coming from the, the bronze fluid pipe. You can simply right click that twice and it'll connect in automatically, as you can see. I think it needs to be up. Uh, that's high enough that it needs to be. Tin cable, we can do the same. So let's just put one more, put the tin cable back again. Like that. 
and as you can see the copper pipe is actually one height one block too high so we'll just remove the top of this and then put onto this the chemical reactor uh, chemical reactor I've got two made actually one in the backpack and one here so let's put this one down and then we shall select the recipe so the recipe we want is the hydrochloric acid recipe this one so let's click this one into here and that locks it in so we can then connect those two up we'll also at the same time lock the other input up because we need that for the next the next process like this so that's now locked and you can nothing can go in there so then we just need to connect these onto the machine and then it should start to work so let's start with the the copper first and then the bronze and then the tin right click those so then that should start to actually work so it doesn't look as though it is doing it's got hydrogen it hasn't got any chlorine in there the reason it hasn't got any chlorine is because I took it all out with a tank here so let's take this aluminium tank so that's give you 16 buckets this particular tank from um, modern industrialization it's not a huge amount but it's it's sort of okay so what we can do is we can just simply connect that into this with a copper pipe or I can do it I think this is probably the best way to do it as it's supposed to so you right click that twice and it connects it in with the pipe makes life a lot easier so let's put the tank on top of that like that now. Go back a bit, I think I'm too close. And I can't connect it in <laughs> without breaking this block. I have to break the block, no big deal. And then I should be able to connect this in. And make, I want to make this an output. So let's right click this. And then we can shift right click with an empty hand. If we shift down, go down here, we should be able to reach it. So we just say that's an output. And then this starts to work, as you can see, lit up. So now it's producing hydrochloric acid. Wow, hard work, huh? So we've got, probably got two buckets of hydrogen. Uh, so it's coming in two at a time, which is great. And you'll notice that the overclock is starting to work. It's getting more efficient as it processes. So, it's almost everything in uh, modern industrialization is like that right i'll be back in a second because uh, it's night time so right now we can now put on here we'll just put down a piece of tin cable because we don't need these two chemicals anymore for this next process as far as i remember so let's just put down a tin cable i've got some gold fluid pipes here as well I took those out of my bag in the night time so we can just put down another piece of tin cable. On top of that, we can put down a second chemical reactor like this. And what we need to do now is we need to take the hydrochloric acid out of here and put that into this chemical reactor. That's one of the two recipes. In fact, we might as well do it from here. So we need the polyviral chlorine. So that is made from this. So what we need to do now is between acetylene and hydrochloric acid. So we get the hydrochloric acid from the, the tank and acetylene will put in automatically. So what we'll do is we'll set up those two connections. So the first connection, we will use the... Uh, actually, I've got some aluminium pipes. I'll do the same as I did last time. Let's get those out of the backpack. And fluid, stainless steel item pipes, steel pipes. There we go. So we can just simply put these down like this. And connect those two together. Onto the, onto the machine so the hydrochloric acid comes out of course we have to probably a good idea to prime this did I save these recipes on here let me just can't remember to be honest with you. no I didn't so let's go and click on here the polyviral chloride as a recipe and then we should be able to do that in actually click it into the machine you can see we've got the button on here so the vinyl chloride is the one we want to do so let's click this into here like that and that's one recipe what we can then do is feed this vinyl chloride back out and put it into here so let's do that as well so we'll do the uses of vinyl chloride on here and we'll set this recipe up so now there's the important slots are already locked into place so i can't go wrong with putting my chemicals in here but it's the only thing i've got to watch out for is i'm not taking anything out else out of it and we've got hydrochloric acid oh we've got two but two of those i should have locked up the other one shouldn't i it doesn't matter they're both at the same output so, so we're safe to right click this here twice and then that's going to come out into here and the only place it can go is in here which is fine so acetylene that's the next recipe let's look at the use of the recipe for acetylene it comes directly out of the uh, distillation tower but in very low amounts 
so what we can actually do with this is we can put this through the um, electric blast furnace cooper nickel tier and we can then just take 200 buckets of methane or 2 million 200 milli buckets of methane which will produce 200 milli buckets of um, acetylene and that's actually very good because there's no other use if you press uses on methane there's no other uses for it and that as we saw the recipe for the methane is actually one of the byproducts of the distillation tower again in high high amounts so we're getting 200 milli buckets of acetylene per bucket of steam crack that far. wow so what we can do is that here i've got some already prepared so let's just break this like that so that is an input into here and i decided i was going to use gold as the input so let's just take the, the gold food pipe here that's copper i don't want copper i wanted gold tin aluminium gold oh, where's it gone to oh it's here look hidden away so as you see the aluminium pipe's got a low priority i think that's the way it works so we can set that up and we can push that straight into there and then we just need a this tank I've got of acetylene here put that on the end the only thing this can do is go out so it's safe enough to right click this on here and just change this to being out so it's all gone and it's been consumed into here so let's have a look at this so now we've got acetylene 16 buckets hydrochloric acid 16 buckets and we should be making some we've got no power because I didn't connect it in let's just connect it in can I see it I guess I can see it easily enough from here right click that into this and now got power as you can see and it's starting to make uh, vinyl chloride so while that's doing that let's go and get some chrome dust I'll be back in a second with some chrome dust from the from the other processing I think we've got plenty in stock at the moment so actually I'll have a look together so it only takes a second or so to get down here so rubber let's have a look at chrome 740 let's take a stack of that this will be fine for now we've actually got 21 crush we're not doing too badly with chrome so i would actually like to speed up the centrifuge because that is horribly slow so let's put into here now chrome have we got vinyl chloride no we need to make the vinyl chloride go in and out so we can put this, this cr tiny chrome dust in here so the vinyl chloride we need to get going in and out now the way to do that is here i've just taken a steel fluid pipe like this and we'll do that on the same the same principle here i've got see i've already got two outputs we just need the third because there's three per block if you remember so let's get a steel i don't get it out to fair steel um, actually it really doesn't matter as long as it's not one I've already been using but I've got plenty of steel fluid pipes let's just put one of those down here like this and we do need to prime this one but if I prime this one because it could take either of the two outputs like that so let's just come along here with a bucket one bucket will be fine in fact I think I have to right click this with something else so what we need to prime this is with is some vinyl chloride we've got four buckets of that already made so we can then prime this pipe we've got the bucket in hand it's easy like that. and before i do this i'm going to make sure i put that bucket into here <laughs> so we've actually got some vinyl chloride into that like that and then we can right click this one time and it'll be and then an input and an output so that one bucket will now be five buckets because we've already made some of this vinyl chloride. So we're just waiting for the polyvinyl chloride to come out. Actually, while that's doing that, let's just fill in this hole here. I've got a hole. We don't need that hole anymore. In fact, we don't need this hole anymore. So we can fill that one up as well. In fact, we probably don't even need this tank here. So I can remove the tank. I can remove the copper a copper pipe coming out of that so big deal and then i can fill it in again with some stone make things look neater huh? and then we can take this we can leave a pipe we just need an empty tank so let's take an empty tank like that, and put that on the end of this and i find the easiest way is to put one piece of pipe a 
across like that and then just put a well, let's be consistent what have we got here bronze yes let's just put a piece of bronze pipe I've got some here somewhere yeah down here and again we'll prime this because there are two outputs now one of the outputs should be empty because it's coming into here but just to be on the safe side we won't take that risk we'll just take a bucket again oh we don't have any yet do we that's the that was a problem we don't have any polyvinyl chloride yet so as soon as this is being processed we shall get this coming out how much have we got in here 14 600 that'll take a few minutes all right i'll tell you what i'll be back as soon as the processing is starting for the uh, polyvinyl chloride so what i want to show you also is this as you can see this is probably the last bucket of the um uh, acetylene that we've got so we've basically got 16 buckets of vinyl chloride which is great but as soon as this has finished processing and goes into the next recipe this overclock efficiency will go down to zero again uh, you'll lose all of this as you just see that like that so now we've got lost one of those chrome tinnitus and that's now producing uh we lost half a bucket of that's good so we're going to actually end up with 1.4 buckets per bucket of vinyl chloride which is which is reasonably good so we we'll hear the polyvinyl chloride will come in here in a second and then the efficiency here will go up so to be efficient to set this up properly you would actually need three chemical reactors and not mix up the, the different recipes i can't take the bucket out until it's done too but we'll have a look at this first one come through and then i'll wait and i'll see in a second when the second one's coming through So now we've got one bucket's worth of polyvinyl chloride. We can take that and we can put that into this pipe here. Uh, we'll do it on this end. It doesn't matter which one we do it. And then we can then make sure this is an output. Like that. And that will fill in this tank with what we've got. I had to be careful there because I don't want the polyvinyl chloride coming. Well, you can't go it back in again. So that's fine. That's safe enough. But as you can see, we have our first polyvinyl chloride, which we can then take that and we can then... Um, use that in the in the assembler so that's it for this episode I hope you've enjoyed it next episode I'm going to look at possibly making argon argon's a bit of a process we have to make the pressurizer in order to get the argon so I've got the materials ready for the pressurizer because it requires titanium and it requires lots of titanium anyway until next time I wish you all the best bye for now